हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू क्लास ट्वेल्व दिस इयर यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिज्म इन पार्ट वन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिज्म इज अ स्टडी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस कैन बी एड्रेस इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस कैन बी इन यूनिफॉर्म मोशन और इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस कैन बी इन एक्सेलरेटेड मोशन इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेज एट रेस्ट In this, you will study two chapters. Chapter one, chapter two, that is electric charges and electric field, electric potential and capacitor. So that is called as electrostatics. Electro means charges, static is at rest. So electrostatics in that chapter one and chapter two. These two chapters we are going to study. Then the charges in uniform motion. charges in uniform motion in this chap topic you are going to study around five chapters what is current electricity that is chapter 3 then magnetic effect of electric current that is chapter 4 magnetism and matter that is chapter 5 electromagnetic induction That is chapter six and alternate current. That is chapter seven. These five chapters we are going to study. That is based on charges in uniform motion. And one more is charges in accelerated motion. Charges in accelerated motion. In this, you are going to study chapter eight, that is electromagnetic waves. It means you can say part one fully. It is based on electric charges. It is a study of electric charges, and all the topics, all the chapters, they are interrelated. There is a sequence, and that's why you have to do this preparation also in sequence. Chapter one, then chapter two, then only up to chapter eight. Okay. Now. Come to the point that is electric charge at rest. We are going to study about this topic that is electrostatics. In this, we will study about the static charges. So let us first of all we discuss about electric charge. Electric charge with any particle electric charge it is there. Charges can be of two type: positive charge as well as negative charge so let us see if you study the structure of atom in the atom there is a nucleus in the nucleus there are protons and neutrons whereas around the nucleus electrons are evolving if you see all these three particles they are having mass proton mass neutron mass or the electron mass if you see Mass of proton it is around 1.67 into 10 minus to minus 27 kilogram. Similarly, mass of neutron also almost it is similar that is 1.67 into 10 minus to minus 27 kilogram. The mass of electron it is 9.1 into 10 minus to minus 31 kg. All three particles they are having mass. Mass. is a scalar quantity and its si unit is kilogram similarly electric charge charge of proton which is represented by symbol e That is equal to 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. Mass of uh, this charge of electron is represented by minus e, and that is equal to minus 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. You can see both particles are having equal charge, but charge of proton is positive, charge of electron is negative. Whereas, if you talk about the neutron, it has a zero charge. 
it is neutral it is neutral now in any atom number of protons are always equal to number of electrons so if you calculate the charge of uh, protons and the charge of electrons let atom is a thing z number of protons charge of proton is plus z d and charge of electrons if you see minus z d if you add this net charge is zero net charge will be zero it means that atom is electrically neutral see here simply we have added it reason that is electric charge is also like mass charge is also scalar quantity SI unit is coulomb it is from the name of scientist so any atom electrically it is neutral again if you revise mass of all the three particles it is there mass scalar quantity s and it is kilogram similarly electric charge also scalar quantity its unit is coulomb charge of proton and electron is equal but opposite in any atom as many protons are there that many electrons are there so they have what amount of positive charge and amount of negative charge and that's why net charge of an atom is zero also if you talk about any body any body it is made up of atoms any body is made up of atoms so net charge of any body is also zero so any body is also whatever is the size of that body may be smaller size or bigger size but the net charge of the body is always zero now because the net charge is zero we cannot see the electrostatic forces acting between the two bodies in nature in 11th standard you have studied comparative view that electric force it is 10 raised to 36 times stronger than gravitational force but still we are not able to see the effect of this electric force reason that is all the bodies are electrically neutral and if the body is electrically neutral then you will not see the effect of electric force reason that is suppose that the two bodies, body A and body B, both are having particles, they have mass, because of mass there is gravitational force, you can see the impact of that. But the, about the charge, that much positive charge is there, that much negative charge is there, here also let's say, this is positive charge, this is negative charge, now between positive quality there is a repulsive force, between negative and negative there is a repulsive force between positive and negative charge there is a attractive force between negative and positive there is attractive force so as much positive charge uh, attractive force is there that much repulsive force is there and that's a net force between the two bodies always it is zero and that's why we cannot see the effect of electrostatic forces acting in nature if you want to see the effect of this electrostatic force then the body must be a charged body and to make a body charged how can you do that can you create a proton in the body or can you create electron in the body or can you destroy it it is not possible what you can do that is either you can give the charge that is in terms of you can give the electrons to the body from one body to another or you can take out the electrons from the body and give it to another body why the electrons because you see mass of electron it is very less compared to protons or neutrons the mass of electrons it is almost 1 upon 10 raised to 4 times 
it means 1 by 10,000 times it is lighter and that's why another one thing it is in the orbit okay so what you is the binding energy of the electron is there at least that much energy if you supply then you can make the electron free so that way you can move or transfer the electrons from one body to another and that way you can charge a body okay so that way charging a body can be done so let us see how we can charge a neutral body there are various ways of charging a body one is by friction in 11th class you studied about friction when two bodies are in contact motion if you have two different bodies then friction force can be acting between them and this phenomenon we call as a friction acting between the two bodies in this process what happens that is the energy which is developed energy which is generated or we can say kinetic energy of the body which is converted to heat energy the electrons of that body can gain this energy and it may be become free so if this process takes place there can be transfer of electrons from one body to another now obviously the body in which the electrons which have a lesser banding energy will become free okay and that's why if we take two different bodies that's body a body b both are of different kind okay if you rub these two bodies then due to transfer of electrons from one body to another let us say from body a that it has a less binding energy electrons so from body a certain electrons uh, becomes free let's say n electrons are transferred from body a to body b from body a for example let's say 10 electrons are going to body b then in body A, what are the charge left? Plus 10 E. And what are the charge in body B? Minus 10 E. What is the reason? Earlier both were neutral. But from this body A, when 10 electrons are moving to body B, body A is losing 10 electrons. It means it has 10 excess protons. And that's why its charge becomes plus 10 E. Whereas body B is gaining 10 electrons, so it is having charge minus 10 okay so this way both the bodies becomes charged so you can see here that body which is transfer electrons body which transfer electrons requires positive charge and body which gains electrons acquires negative charge so this way by transfer of electrons both the body becomes charge bond another way by conduction same when a body here we see both the bodies are neutral here this body is positively charged this body is negatively charged positively charged body means it has electric potential that is positive or we can say higher body b is having negative charge means it has electric potential that is lesser or negative means both the bodies they are at a different electric potential Electric potential that is related to the term electric charge. Any body which has electric charge, it has electric potential also. More the charge, more the potential. Okay, positive charge is means positive potential, negative charge that is negative potential. So here, if two bodies are at different potential, let us consider body A, it is having certain positive charge. It means that its electric potential is higher and body B let's say it is a neutral body its electric potential is zero now if you bring these two bodies in contact then electric current that always flows from higher potential to lower potential this will be attraction of electric current 
electric current it flows from higher potential to lower potential and how long it flows till there is a potential difference now see in 10 standard also your circuit when electric current flows it flows from higher potential to lower potential but the direction of motion of electron is from lower potential to higher potential so what will happen here if current flows from A to B, it means that electrons will move from B to A. Now you will see where is the electron here in body B. Body B is neutral. Body B is neutral doesn't mean that it has no charge. It has as many positive charges are there, that many negative charges are there. So from body B, suppose if one electron is coming to body A, it will neutralize this positive ion. So that way, what will happen that is, after some time, body A and body B both will have equal potential. It is not necessary that for potential to be equal, the charge on both the bodies also it is equal. It depends on the shape or the size of the body also. Okay. So, this is a process we call conduction. Again, here also the charge transfer it is because of movement of electrons. Okay, so that's why we can say the charging of a body can take place due to the transfer of electrons. In the friction also there will transfer of electrons. Here in the conduction also there is transfer of electrons. Okay, one more way is induction. What is induction? Suppose this is body A, it has a certain charge, that is a certain positive charge it is having. Near this body A, if we bring body B, which is very close to it, but not in direct contact. Now what will happen? Due to this electric charge, there is, there is an electrostatic force. Like charge is repel, and like charge is atom. Body B, it is neutral, it means that net charge is zero, but it has positive charge also as well as that much negative charge. So what will happen? Due to that positive charge in body A, positive charges of body B will get repulsive force and negative charges will get attractive force. So what is the situation that is? As you bring the body B closer to body A, in body B, there will be rearrangement of electric charges. Here on this phase there will be induction of negative charges, on this phase there will be induction of positive charge. It means that from here electrons of these atoms they come to this phase and that's why that atoms becomes positive ions and here there is the accumulation of negative charges. So this way induction of charges takes place on the body. Now if you convert this body B into a charged body, what you can do that is near this body B to make this body B a charged body, what you can do that is you can connect the body B to the ground as you connect it to the ground, you can see this light charge, there was repulsive force and because of that repulsive force and you are giving connection to the ground, this light charge they will transfer to ground. Again the question, the positive charge means positive ions, how they will move to the ground? So it is not. What is happening that is, electrons from the ground, we can say ground is a big reservoir of charges, okay. So electrons from the ground are transferred to this body and they neutralize these positive ions. So that way from this body B positive charges transfer to ground. Now again if you remove this grounding first and then if you remove the body A also then only B, body B is left. So whatever charge on that that will be distributed uniformly on the body and that way Initially, body B was neutral, now it became a charged body. So this way, you can see various ways we are discussing all that is a transfer of electrons from one body to another. 
so these three ways again one by friction two different bodies when they rub with each other they are transfer of electrons from one body to another body which gives electrons acquire positive charge body which gain electrons acquire negative charge another is by conduction charged body if it is brought in contact with neutral body or another body then there is a transfer of electrons from one body to another till the electric potential of both the body becomes equal here the condition is that is it continues till electric potential of both the bodies becomes equal and third one that is by induction so in all these three ways you are charging you can charge the body and the neutral bodies can be a charge body now we will see the properties of electric charges electric charges various properties are there one is a conservation of electric charge What do you mean by conservation? That is, electric charge neither created nor it is destroyed. If you see any chemical reaction or the nuclear reaction, the amount of charge in the reaction before or after it always remains same. It means that you neither can create a proton or the electron or you cannot destroy it also. Okay? This is what we say conservation of electric charge. Another is Quantization of electric charge. What do you mean by this quantization? Quanta. Quanta means a small packet, small amount. Okay. Here, charge of a proton or charge of electron plus E or minus E, that is the quanta of charge. It means that uh, the smallest charge which can exist in nature is charge of proton or electron. You cannot get charge, isolated charge can exist which is smaller than this. Yes, you have studied in 11th standard that there are quarks, various kind of quarks which are having charge that can be a fraction of this charge of electron or proton plus or minus one third of E plus or minus two third of E, but isolated quarks do not exist. Always they are exist in a group and this formation of this group can be a proton or a neutron or like that. Okay. So the smallest charge which can exist in nature that is the charge of a proton or electron and charge of any body. We have discussed right just now that is there are three ways of charging. Okay transfer of electrons takes place from one body to another. Now is it possible that uh, when the transfer of electrons takes place a fraction of electron moves from one body to another? It is not. Okay. Always it is integer number. And that's why the charge of any body it is always plus or minus n times e. Where n is integer. n is integer. It is not possible that from a body 5.7 electron is transferred to body B. Okay. It is either 5 or 6. It cannot be a fraction of the electron that can transfer from one body to another. And that is what we call quantization of electric charge. The charge of any body is always integral multiple of charge of electron or proton. And one more property that is additive nature. Additive nature of electric charge. We know that charge is a scalar quantity and that's why suppose uh, this is a body on which a different different regions let the charge is R. Let's say here plus 3 coulomb in this region charge let's say minus 2 coulomb in this region charge let's say it is plus 5 coulomb. What is the net charge of this body? Net charge will be 5 plus 3 minus that is plus 5 
plastic scholar. This is what we say additive nature of electric charge, that algebraic sum it is okay, because charge is a scalar quantity. Okay. So these are the properties of electric charge. Again, conservation of electric charge, it means that electric charge neither created nor destroyed. Quantization of electric charge, it means charge of any body. is integral multiple of charge of electron or protons and additive nature that is net charge of a body is the algebraic sum different charges distributed over it. So these are the properties of electric charge. Apart from this you know that like charges they repel each other and like charges they attract each other. This is what the force of attraction or repulsion that is what Coulomb's law. So next topic we will discuss that is Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law and it is very similar to gravitational force of attraction given by Newton. What is the Newton's law of gravitation? That is, any two bodies in the universe having certain mass, they attract each other. Okay. What will be the distance between the two bodies? This force that is always attractive, it is a long range force. And all this which you have studied. Okay, it is acting along the line of the center of two bodies. So it is a central force, it is a conservative force. All this property you have studied about gravitational force. Exactly in the similar way, Coulomb's law is there. Coulomb's law what it says that any two bodies having certain charges, let's say charge Q1 and Q2, if they are separated by certain distance R, then electrostatic force is acting between these two charges and the force acting along the line joining the center of these two charges. If charges are unlike, then force is attractive. But acting along the line joining the center of two charges. Also, the magnitude of the force it is directly proportional to product of the two charges and inversely proportional to square of distance. So it is similar to the gravitational force where gravitational force that was depending on the mass okay here it is because of charge it was also inversely proportional to R square this is also inversely proportional to R square it means that this force is also a long range force this force is also acting along the line of the center of the body so this is also central force and it is also a conservative force so this is a similarity the only difference that is Gravitational force that was due to mass and mass is always positive, so it was always attractive, whereas the charge of body can be positive or negative, and that's why the force also can be attractive or repulsive. So the nature of force can be attractive or repulsive. Also, another one thing that is about the strength. This force it is much much stronger compared to gravitational force. One basic difference that is gravitational force is that in which two bodies they are placed in any medium. Gravitational force is not depending on the medium in which the two bodies are placed. But here the electric force that depends on the medium, strength of the force depends on the medium in which the two bodies are placed. And that's why here the proportionality constant if you write like gravitational force it was capital G here you can write as K this K is a function of medium its value depends on the medium in which the two charges are placed so let us first if you write the statement of this law according to this relation you can write the electrostatic force
acting between two point charges. This is the important word here point charges. Point charges it means that compared to the magnitude of the charges, separation with the charges is much much larger. What is the reason? This law is applicable only and only for which charges that is point charges. This is that is if the charges are not point charges, means if the charges are very close to each other, then what can happen that is the phenomenon of induction. Of induction that we have discussed in previous topic. Okay. So if induction takes place, then net charge on the particles or the bodies will be different, and that's why the resulting force acting between the particles that will be also different, and you will not be able to calculate according to this Coulomb's law, and that's why. It is applicable only on only for which charge that is point charge. So what is the statement now? This electrostatic force acting between the point charge is separated by certain distance. Is directly proportional to the product of Magnitude of charges, you can see here proportional to Q1 into Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of distance between the two charges. So, mathematically, you can write m is equal to kq1 divided by r square. This is the magnitude of this force. Here, k it is given by the value 1 upon 4 pi epsilon. This symbol you can read it as epsilon, that is called as permittivity. Of medium. Permittivity. What is the meaning? Permittivity. See, so when the electric charge is placed into any medium, due to that charge in the region, in the space around the charge, electric field is developed. Or we can say the energy due to those charge is propagating into this medium. So, what is this permittivity? That is the tendency or the capacity of the medium that what extent by what extent it can retain that energy due to that charge okay and that is why the permittivity of a medium that is different for different medium if it is a vacuum or air value of this permittivity that is represented by symbol epsilon sub is 0 it is around 8.856 into 10 raised to minus 12 the unit of that you can write that is if you write here suppose k is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square then you can get the equation of epsilon 0 as q1 q2 upon 4 pi f r square and Q1 into Q2 that is Coulomb square upon FR square that is Newton meter square. So this is a unit S unit of epsilon zero that is permittivity of vacuum or air. For any other medium, its value is different. Okay. So different different medium, the value of permittivity it is also different. Again, if we see about this force charges q1 and q2 they are separated by a certain distance r the force is acting along the line when the center of the charge is that is repulsive or attractive okay it is a long range force it is stronger than the gravitational force around 10 raised to electric force it is around 10 raised to 36 times stronger compared to gravitational force okay. now force as it is a vector quantity if you want to represent this in terms of vector rotation then 
Let us consider first these two charges Q and Q2. If you put into the coordinate system, let's say XY coordinate system, in which two charges are placed Q1 and N, Q2 separated by distance R. The position vector of this charge Q1 is R1, position vector of charge Q2 is R2. If these two charges, if they are like charges, then the force acting on charge 1 due to charge 2, this is the direction of force. Then the magnitude of this force you can write F12, magnitude is equal to KQ1 Q2 by R square. Now this R that is the distance of charge 1 from charge 2. So you can write as R12. Okay. Now if you want to show the direction, what is the direction of that force? This is the direction. So vector R12, this should be the direction. So if you put the unit vector in that direction, unit vector that is a vector having magnitude 1 and the direction is that okay so if you want to write the value of this vector r12 using triangular law of factor addition you can say vector r2 plus r12 that makes r1 so you can write the value of r12 that is say r1 is equal to r2 plus r12 therefore r12 is equal to R1 minus R2. Or simply you can say initial position is this, final position is this, so final minus initial. So it is R1 minus R2 vector divided by its magnitude R1 minus R2 into R1 minus R2 square. So this is the factor form, magnitude multiplied with unit factor. So you can write as F12 is equal to K Q1 Q2 denominator. You can write R1 minus R2 Q into after R1 minus R2. Similarly, if you want to write for force acting on charge 2 due to charge 1, F21, then direction of vector R1, R21 will be along this direction. So, force equation will be KQ1 Q2 upon R2 minus R1 Q into R2 minus this is F21. So if you compare this two, you can write <coughs> F12 is minus of F21. Both forces are equal in magnitude opposite in direction. This way you can represent Coulomb's law in vector form. Williams line vector.